<laughs> I guess I start today. I think so. Well, hello, friends. <laughs> Welcome to Sermon Talk Back. I don't remember what Patrick says. He has probably some clever intro. Uh, I just forgot it. Our uh, sponsors are uh, uh, Quip and Ever. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. So, uh, so here uh, with Patrick, who preached uh, this past week. And uh, I get to be the interviewer and going to ask him some hard questions uh, about the book of Revelation. And did one of my kids just come no, in the background? There was a dog in the background. A dog in the background. All Watson right. Watson was in. So, Patrick, this past week, uh, you preached a, a really kind of poignant sermon considering where we are in the world and, and about journey into the center of the kingdom. Uh, specifically, you used uh, the book of Revelation to kind of be our guide, uh, chapter 21. And so, you know, I know when we write sermons, there's like all this exegesis that we do yeah. on a few, you know, six verses and you get like 21 minutes or 20 minutes. Yeah. It doesn't make it. So you know, give us a little bit of background on the exegesis of that Revelation passage. Yeah. So, you know, this in Revelation, it's this is kind of the beginning of the end of the book, mm -hmm. which is the beginning of the end of the whole book. But John never really wrote this as like this is going to one day be the end of the scriptures you know it, it was this is a revelation by a, a man who was in prison on on a on an island that had a, a marble mine he was more than likely either working there or he might even have been too old to have even done that and so this is his understanding of the end of the world and so he, he you know at this point in revelation we've heard a lot of things happen and then now he's at the end and the idea was kind of that this letter, which is kind of what his revelation became, was sent to seven churches. So it was more of an encouragement. You know, mm -hmm. this is an encouragement. Keep going. Uh, the, the kingdom is near. But the kind of what he was getting at was uh, at the end, it's not just the new heaven and the new earth, but that it's complete oneness with God. And I think that that's sometimes overlooked in Revelation. We get caught up in monsters and everything else. But when he says Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, he's kind of talking about just how large god is and and you know how uh how all-encompassing god is so that you know the kingdom the new kingdom will be there but that uh when it will also be fully god there'll be no separation between that and so that's he was kind of encouraging people that were in a similar situation as him and you know a lot of people wanted revelation out of the bible you know uh thomas jefferson when he did his he just kind of blacked that whole section out same with martin luther just because they thought it had nothing to teach us but i think it really wraps up a lot of the anxieties and worries we have in this idea that God is bigger than all things, bigger than the end and big, bigger than the beginning. And so I think John kind of captures that in the only way he can. You, you mentioned in just then this idea of oneness with God mm -hmm. is kind of being this overarching theme in the, the book of Revelation. And uh, one of the things that's really interesting about that is uh, if you tie that to the kingdom. So could you could you expound a little bit of that on, on how, I mean, how do we participate? Like, so, yeah. you know, it's easy to say we're, you know, God wants to be one with God and we want to be one with God. What does that look like? Yeah. I think, you know, we, we try to talk about it central as much as possible, getting our feet out on the road, but we also try to talk about our hands and feet being God's hands and feet and um, our breath being God's breath, our mind being like God's. And so I think during this Lenten season, as we've kind of moved toward the center of our faith, it's also been a movement closer to, you know, human realness, which in some ways is being created in the image of God. It's like what they call the Imago Dei to use our, you know, yeah. our, our one or two dollar words from yeah, seminary. Right. But the, we're in the image of God and, and that um, our fully realized self, our, our, our actualized self is when we are, are so close to um, living like Christ that we can almost not distinguish between, you know, uh, our actions and Christ's actions in the world, and that that's kind of what we're aiming towards. So speaking of getting on the road, you uh, you had the Tolkien quote, the road goes ever on, yep. uh, which is just an incredible, uh, I mean, it's an incredible song yep. in, in, the, in, a, in Tolkien's writing. The fact that someone can write about worlds and, and, create, and create them, them yeah. and, and then not only write about them, but then put art and poetry and song. And in song, them. yeah. But, you know, so that was a, a portion of the sermon. It was one that really struck me. Is there anything else, again, like I love the idea of knowing how much goes in, but when you were thinking about Tolkien and, and specifically this passage, anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, the there was a writing that he had kind of before he had, it was while he was working on, you know, Middle Earth, 
and he called it uh, the leaf by Niggle. And this is like, Niggle was this little character similar to a hobbit and he paints these beautiful paintings. Uh, one of them he's painting that he's working on is a tree and he actually passes away during the, the painting of the tree. And, you know, people keep coming by and they're just admiring how beautiful the artwork is. And he's sitting there as a ghost kind of saying, you know, I never finished this or I didn't finish this one leaf. And he like wants to get back to his life because he's focused on one leaf of this large mural he's been painting his entire life. And uh, I think it speaks a little bit to sometimes who we are. I think it speaks to what Tolkien was doing. And it kind of speaks to the, the writing of a sermon that we can get so hyper-focused on one portion, you know, and so hyper-focused on one portion of our life that we miss out on the the beauty of the kingdom. And that's not to say that the work that we're doing on this one thing isn't wonderful. You know, so many of us have hobbies or jobs or things that we put all of our time and effort into and they're beautiful and they are, you know, celebrated. But if we never take a step back to see, you know, the beauty of the, the kingdom all around us or how our leaf is shaping, you know, the rest of the tree. Um, and I thought that it was really introspective of Tolkien. There was no way for me to kind of work it in. Sure. But, but I think it kind of speaks to every day we, we feel like we're working on this one thing. And, and, and sometimes if, if we can take a step back and see how we're placed into, into the world now and how that shapes the kingdom, I think that that, that was something from that, that never made it. And then I think helped me understand, you know, how much he worked on the languages, the poetry and all of that. And just the fact that he had this volume of work and it was still able to to talk to us today and kind of move us forward, I think is always fascinating. And it helped him along his Christian faith, you know, to yeah. create. And so I thought there was in the, in the creation of that kingdom helped him understand his place in, in the kingdom of God, which was interesting. That's really interesting. You know, um, when Jesus talks about the bringing of the kingdom mm -hmm. in the gospels, uh, so often historically that's been interpreted, um, you know, the coming of the kingdom yeah. but the, the the actual language as you know is in the present tense it's, it's yeah. the participating in the bringing of the kingdom so if you were to say to folks um listening maybe a sentence or two you know you know how how do we participate in the kingdom i mean what does that, yeah. that look like i think it goes back to the sermon that you me and rob preached together when we did the homeward bound and we had mm -hmm. the record player and this was, you know, during the Advent season, and we talked about that, that homesickness uh, for the kingdom and that we were actively kind of look, moving in that direction, and, and like you were saying. And so I always think of it, you know, we lean on Beekner a lot. As he says, you know, it's a place that, that we already know. It's the mm -hmm. all the times that we have strength that we don't know where it comes from, all that, that that's the inbreaking of the kingdom in our lives, and that's the place that we're ever homesick for. Uh, but I also really loved how uh, John used the word for God with the people. Uh, and he used the, you know, setting the tent up among the people. And so uh, yeah. um, I really, I think that I imagine, you know, all of us camp together, moving forward, similar to how the Israelites would have been. And, and that there among them in the middle was, mm -hmm. was God hammering the stakes in deep because this is where we're going to be for the long haul all together. So I just imagine it. Uh, I, I really love that language, God's tent said among the people i really i think that that kind of encapsulates how the kingdom is where we're all together celebrating camping out and the you know I, I really enjoy that that's awesome well it was a great sermon a good Thanks, word man. about the kingdom and, and what you just said there is a great segue so we're we're filming this and uh in three days or whatever four days is palm, palm, Sunday, yeah. palm passion sunday yeah. you know we kind of do a, a hybrid a hybrid here in central where we you know we remember the hosannas but and we also begin our Holy Week journey of Jesus. You know, when you think about Jesus putting a tent amongst us, not only did he put a tent amongst us, but he gave his life yeah. for people. He, he demonstrated the, the ultimate way of, of the inbreaking of the kingdom. And so uh, I hope everybody listening will tune in on Sunday morning for yeah. uh, Palm Passion Sunday and then Holy Week. We will have a Monday, Thursday service and a Good Friday service. Both at seven, and then we will have uh, noon. Yeah, noon, noon prayer. prayer noon prayer. Yeah, yeah. So Monday through Friday, uh, prayer from noon to about twelve twelve twenty. So if you have a lunch break or whatever, and that'll be led by 
the pastoral staff and mm -hmm. members of the program staff, and then um, obviously moving moving onwards towards Easter. Yeah, and then uh, one cool announcement that we we started sharing is that Easter Sunday we'll have our online services at eight forty five and eleven, like we always do. But we're also going to have an in person uh, eight o'clock sunrise service right yeah. in front of the church. So right. it'll be outdoors, masked, all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, but together. Yeah, and it'll be just a great time for us to to get together. It's something that, you know, we've always talked about at Central, but during a normal uh, Easter season, yeah. uh, there's almost no time to get everyone at all coordinated for three services, but to be able to do this online and uh, has allowed us to, to do that. And I think we're all just yearning to be together on that day. Absolutely. We'll have our the cross out front for flowers, so bring some flowers yeah. uh, to put in the cross. And uh, yeah, we uh, we look forward to this Holy Week together. Yeah. It's it's not an easy week necessarily, but it's a necessary week and one that we are thankful for. Exactly. And, and in some ways, COVID kind of does help us in Holy Week because that discomfort, that, yeah. that uncertainty uh, that we all kind of have borne every day, we get to kind of lean into that as Jesus did as well. And so uh, it's not a necessarily a fun feeling or a comfortable feeling, but it's one that leads to new life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Do you have some kind of outro or something? Man? I don't know. I, maybe a graphic. No, yeah. no, but I'm just thankful that for you guys that have been tuning in and thank uh, Luke and Rob are preaching next week. And so look for their uh, preview and otherwise we'll see you next week. Blessings.